What's up, Lantern TV? My name is Casey Smith, back with another episode of Lantern Sports Play Breakdown. Ohio State, this weekend, they came away with a big 54-7 victory over the Indiana Hoosiers. The offense is going to get a ton of credit for contributing to that win, but I want to focus on the defensive front, who I thought played a big factor in the victory. So this first play here, Indiana, they're going with a uh, standard formation. They have trips up here at the top. What they're going to do is this receiver, he's not even going to run a route. These two receivers are going to run little hitches while this middle receiver in the trips is going to run a skinny post. And what that is, is he's going to come up about 10 to 15 yards in that area and then skinny his way towards the middle of the field. But Bryson Shaw, he does a great job of taking that away. See, here are the two in-cutting five-yard hitch routes. They're non-factors. The running back here, he's going to come down to the flat and be an outlet just in case. The receiver gets by Marcus Williamson there, but Bryson Shaw off the screen is becoming the safety help. And what I want you to focus on while all this is going on, which this is definitely in the realm of a coverage sack, but I want you to notice the power and speed of Haskell Garrett to drive his man into the lap of Jack Tuttle. Up at the top here, Zach Harrison's able to force Tuttle back inside. He wants to scramble out here, but the way he's able to swim his way in there and force him back inside is great for Haskell Garrett to be able to come away with the easy sack. On this next play, what Indiana is trying to do, they're going to send this man in motion. Marcus Williamson, he recognizes that. He's trailing them. And then almost in a similar basketball switch off, Bryson Shaw is going to come from the center field position and come down and take away this motion. Marcus Williamson is going to go to the center field free safety position. They come across the set. Jack Tuttle, what, what Indiana likes to do is run a lot of misdirection where he baits him with the eyes. That's taken away by Denzel Burke. Ty Freifogel stops his route here. This was just for bait. It's bringing the motion back this way after originally looking this way to try and trip up this free safety. However, all the receivers are running routes in the same way that Tuttle is rolling. This tight end right here, Peyton Hendershot, he's going to originally block Zach Harrison, just chip him a little bit, and then follow through. Same thing with Stephen Carr. Zach Harrison's speed on this play to chase down Tuttle does not allow him to turn his hips and deliver a strike to Peyton Hendershot, who's wide open right here. He is trying to evade this rush, but he's just unable to get away from Zach Harrison with the chase down sack. This third play, it's third and 14, and what Indiana is trying to do, they're trying to pick up some chunk yards, create some space for themselves, but Ohio State's defense doesn't allow that to happen. This corner, this slot corner right here, Lathan Ransom, he's gonna go to the flat and take away any sort of wheel route where this running back here is going to try and run to the field side. All of these, the linebackers and everybody else behind them, they're just going to drop since it's third and 14. They have to defend the sticks. Ohio State's only going to rush four, but what I want you to notice is Tyreek Smith, his first step here is amazing. Watch how powerful it is for him to get past that left tackle, force him to step up into the pocket, and then Ty Hamilton with the great handwork right here. That's one of the things that goes under, underlying in the success of a defensive lineman is how he's able to use his hands to get around defenders. You can be powerful, you can have a ton of speed, but if you don't have the hands to be able to get past these big offensive linemen, you're not going to have much success. And Ty Hamilton right here in the middle does a great job of that as the quarterback is trying to step up in the pocket and perhaps hit this receiver right here on the crosser who knows, but Ty Hamilton does not allow that to happen because he creates a great swim move to get to the quarterback and bring him down. That turned into points. That forces Indiana to punt. The punter mishandled the snap. Marvin Harrison tackles him in the end zone, and that's an extra two points for Ohio State's defense that was set up largely by that great coverage sack right there by Ty Hamilton. On this play here, this was a called run in the huddle. You see this bunch formation here down at the bottom with these tight ends stacked on top of each other. These wide receivers up here, they are decoys. They are trying to draw the defense to this side of the field. 
And down here at the bottom, there's nobody for Ohio State. They're hoping to get Stephen Carr off tackle to the boundary side of the field and up the sideline for a big gain. This play was doomed from the start, though. Indiana's offense is going to slide their protection to the right so they can get off tackle. First things first, though, Jack Tuttle, you have to catch the ball. He doesn't do that. And as they're sliding the protection, Tyleek Williams in the middle here, he's able to just run free by his man because that left guard thinks it's a clear run. So he's Tyleek Williams, if he gets around him, he's just going to be trailing Stephen Carr down the sideline. He might not catch him. However, Jack Tuttle, he drops the ball. The running back is setting up to take the handoff. But by that time, it's too late, and Tyleek Williams is already bringing him down for the sack. On this final play here, it's first and 10. Donovan McCauley, the backup quarterback, is in the game. They go five wide. What they're trying to do is similar to the play before, where the quarterback gives a certain turn to the one side of the field. His eyes are trying to bait the defense into moving to the opposite side of the field. But that's taken away. I want to highlight Court Williams right here. The backups are already in the game. He is a backup. Stephen Carr is going to be Donovan McCauley's first look, and then he's going to try and bait the defense into shifting that way before trying to hit Hendershot on whatever route he's running here. These three receivers, they're going to run five yards and try and block. But what Court Williams does, he tries to go after the ball, but all he has to do is just blow up this middleman in the trips formation here. And he does that to perfection. See, he goes up, and that receiver is defenseless. McCulley is already off that first read because he saw Court Williams coming up, and that would have been a tackle for loss. JTT down at the bottom here, he takes on the double team. The left guard comes over, tries to give the left tackle help. What that does is he forces McCulley, who's known as a runner, he forces him back inside, right into the arms of Tyreek Williams, who didn't stop the play coming around that right tackle. And that's just it for this Ohio State defense who struggled in the early going. If they're able to get after the quarterback and make him uncomfortable, that helps out their secondary that struggled in the beginning of the year. That helps out their linebackers at the first level. And it makes a one-man wrecking crew on that defensive front for the Ohio State defense, which can lead to true success going down the Big Ten stretch and into the college football playoff if they were to make it there. And that'll do it for another episode of Lantern Sports Play Breakdowns. I'm Casey Smith. We'll hope to see you back next time. Take care.